Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. The goal in clasp type removable partial denture prosthodontics is to fabricate a prosthesis of metal and acrylic resin which can be readily inserted and removed by the patient, which will adequately resist reasonable dislodging forces, which will present the best possible appearance, and of utmost importance, which will preserve the health of the patient's remaining teeth and related structures. To achieve this goal, we must formulate a thorough and knowledgeable treatment plan for the restoration, prepare the mouth according to that treatment plan, and fabricate the prosthesis. Surveying diagnostic casts is an, is an integral part of the planning process, and surveying the master cast is an integral part of the fabrication of that prosthesis. What is surveying? In simple terms, surveying is a mechanical method of orienting a stone cast of the patient's dental arch on a parallelometer so we can accurately analyze teeth and soft tissue contours in relation to each other. If this relationship is determined accurately, we may locate areas on teeth where a suitable contour exists to hold the prosthesis in place, retention. We can locate areas on teeth and adjacent tissues which would prevent the prosthesis from going to place, interferences or undesirable undercuts. We can select areas on the teeth which will aid in inserting the prosthesis as well as stabilize it when in place, guide planes, and we can select a path of insertion and removal which would be least disturbing to the appearance of the patient, aesthetics. As an example, this is a cast of a patient for whom a removable partial denture is to be constructed. This semi edentulous condition is a maxillary class 2AP situation. That is, it requires a unilateral distal extension prosthesis with a four-tooth anterior modification and a one-tooth posterior modification. The remaining teeth are widely spaced and are not absolutely parallel to each other. There are buccal prominences in the anterior edentulous segment as well as buccal to each abutment tooth. This is the removable partial denture fabricated for that patient. It is a fairly complex prosthesis with four clasp units, multiple occlusal rests with metal in the interproximal spaces to prevent movement of the teeth, four anterior facings, anterior and posterior palatal bar major connectors, and acrylic resin retention meshwork for the posterior edentulous area. Because this prosthesis was planned and constructed carefully, it fits the master cast and would fit the patient with the same accuracy. It was planned with the aid of a parallelometer, a surveyor, and we selected the position of that cast in relation to the vertical spindle of the surveyor, which was the best compromise among the requirements mentioned before. Retention, undesirable undercuts, guide planes, and aesthetics. This position, once selected, became the path of insertion and removal of that prosthesis on the cast and in the oral cavity. If we take that same prosthesis, or a duplicate of it, and attach a metal rod to it so it will remain in one horizontal position when it is attached to the surveyor, and place the master cast on the cast holder, we can see that the metal framework will fit on that cast when the cast is moved into one position and one position only. If we change the position of the cast, the framework will not fit. This framework was made for one path of insertion and removal and one only. Therefore, a successful removable partial denture is not a collection of clasps, indirect retainers, major and minor connectors and bases designed and fabricated without relationship to each other. The prosthesis must be planned, designed, and fabricated as a single unit with each component in accurate relationship to each other. The simplest removable partial denture is one which will replace only one missing posterior tooth. It consists of clasp units which include retentive and bracing components as well as occlusal rests, minor connectors, and a base area. However, the planning and fabrication of this prosthesis is not as simple as it might appear to be.
If we view this same edentulous situation in cross-section, we note that the abutment teeth on each side of the edentulous space appear to be quite normal, with a normal bell shape to each crown. However, due to drifting, migration, or rotation, the long axes of these two teeth are not quite parallel to each other. If we construct a prosthesis without reference to the bell shape of the teeth and the non-parallelism of the two teeth, that is, without surveying the cast, the resultant framework will appear satisfactory. However, when we try to place this framework on the master cast or insert it, it will not go into place. The framework, because it was fabricated to the form created by the bell shape of the abutment teeth and cervically, is actually wider than the space it must pass through, will not fit because it will be held up by the metal hitting the marginal ridge areas. There are several ways to resolve this situation. First, we could cut the framework in half through the middle of the base area and insert each half separately. This, however, is neither feasible nor acceptable, for the prosthesis would be in two pieces with no way to join them and make a rigid prosthesis once it is inserted. Another alternative is to grind the offending metal arbitrarily by trial and error until the areas are relieved enough to allow the framework to be seated on the cast or inserted in the mouth. This is usually a time-consuming process and invariably leads to weakened areas in the framework and a poor fit of the prosthesis on the teeth. The best way to construct this prosthesis is to locate these undesirable undercuts by the use of a surveyor, which will hold the cast in one position while a vertical carbon rod delineates these areas. Then, by placing a suitable wax in the undercut areas and removing the excess wax by a vertical rod to parallel the wax to the rod, we have eliminated these undesirable undercuts or blocked them out. If the prosthesis is fabricated over this blocked out cast, the framework should fit the cast easily and accurately with little, if any, grinding and it should fit the patient just as easily and accurately. If we view these same two teeth and hold them stationary in an upright position or level while a vertical rod touches them completely around their circumference at that horizontal position, we see that the rod will delineate a line completely around the teeth. This line denotes the greatest circumference of these teeth at that horizontal position. The circumference of the teeth above and below the line is smaller than at the line. This line is known as the height of contour or survey line. However, if we change the horizontal position or we change the tilt of the cast in relation to the vertical rod, we effectively change the position of the greatest circumference of the teeth in relation to that vertical rod. In essence, by changing the horizontal tilt of the cast and the teeth, in relation to the vertical rod, we are changing the location of the height of contour on each tooth. Again, this line denotes the greatest circumference of these teeth at that horizontal position. We have shown only two positions in these graphics, but because the surveyor cast holder is a universal ball joint, a cast mounted on it can assume a limitless number of position variations as related to the vertical spindle. Each change in the horizontal position or tilt of the cast will change the location of the height of contour on each abutment tooth. Any clasp must be positioned on its abutment tooth in correct relation to the height of contour of that tooth as determined by the horizontal tilt of the cast holder. No bracing part of the retentive clasp and no part of the reciprocal arm can be below that line or in an undercut. The flexible part of the retentive clasp arm, retention, must be accurately located in relation to that same height of contour and at a predetermined distance below it at its terminal. The problem becomes one of correctly positioning the clasp on each abutment tooth and, equally important, maintaining the same relative position of all clasps on all abutment teeth so all of the clasps become part of a single unit. Positioning the clasp units of a removable partial denture is vitally important. However, 
the location and identification of all undesirable tissue undercuts is equally as important. Not only must, must we position indirect retainers and minor connectors in their proper place, but when these units must, of necessity, cross an undesirable undercut area, these areas must be located, identified, and blocked out prior to the fabrication of the prosthesis to prevent placement of the rigid components into those areas and preventing the prosthesis from seating. The location of major connectors, primarily on mandibular cases, is of primary concern. Diagrammatically, we are viewing a mandibular dental arch in cross-section as if we are sitting on the tongue. You can see the bilateral undercuts on the lingual side of the abutment teeth in the ridge area. If we fabricate a prosthesis with a rigid lingual bar to fit that arch without reference to those undercuts, the framework will not fit because it is larger than the cross-sectional diameter across the teeth. The framework will hit the cusps of the teeth or, if the teeth are not present, the soft tissue covering the ridge. However, if once we select a particular path of insertion and removal and find such tissue undercuts present, and they may also be in the anterior region, we block out those undercuts with a suitable wax, parallel it, and then construct the prosthesis, the lingual bar is now located so it can be inserted without interference by either the teeth or the soft tissues. Essentially, what we attempt to do by surveying is to locate an ideal position of the diagnostic and or the master cast in relation to a vertical spindle. This position will be the path of insertion and removal of the prosthesis, and this choice is usually based on a compromise of four factors. First, we try to locate or provide for balanced retention. We should have the same amount of retention on all of the abutment teeth. If this retention is not present, the treatment plan and mouth preparation of the patient must provide it. Second, we try to eliminate or minimize all undesirable undercuts. If these undesirable hard or soft tissue undercuts cannot be eliminated during the mouth preparation, they must be located so they can be blocked out prior to the fabrication of the prosthesis. Third, we try to provide parallel guide planes on the abutment teeth. These guide planes must be parallel to each other. They will provide both bracing against the force induced by the retentive arm of the clasp as it moves into the retentive undercut over the height of contour and act as metal guides for the insertion and removal of the prosthesis by the patient. Fourth, we try to provide the best aesthetic quality to the prosthesis by minimizing the amount of metal or resin which will be exposed. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.